A decorative rope dog lead. Hello everybody, welcome back and in today's little project what I thought we'd do is do a decorative dog's lead. Um, okay, this one is a little bit short only because this is for demonstration purposes only. To be honest, if you were making your own dog lead, this section here between this splice here and this splice here would be much longer. That's for you to determine as to how long you want it. But if we actually look at this dog's lead, if we start at the bottom of the dog end, as you can see, in this particular case, I've put myself a carabiner on, but get yourself the sort of clip that you want to attach to your dog's collar. From the there, we've then created a cat's paw eye splice in our rope at this point here. Going up a little bit further, we've then finished it off with a bit of common whipping. And then when we go up a little bit further, that would be the main part of the lead itself. And eventually we get to the handle. At the end of the handle here, we have some more common whipping. And if you want to do different types of whipping, there will check out the just when you're doing this exercise, check out the description below because there'll be other useful things that you might want when you're making this particular dog lead. If we then get to the top end here, let's put that on a diagonal. You can see here I've put what's known as a marlin eye splice or a lazy eye splice, but it looks nice and decorative, and this forms the handle of our dog's lead. So if I just sort of fold that up a little bit so that we can see it a bit better. So you can see at the top there, nice little decorative pattern there for our handle. And then it goes down, obviously, to the dog's lead itself. And that's what we're gonna to do today. So anyway, without further ado, and also, yeah, check the description below. And if you want to see other things, leave me a comment and have a chat with me, okay? Always open for suggestions. But today's little exercise, we're gonna make ourselves a nice, decorative ropes dog lead. Right, so as you can see, here is the end of my rope that I want to actually put our first um, splice in. And the first thing that we need to consider is, first of all, you need to consider how big a loop you want on the end of your rope. Now you can make this, for example, so that you have a fairly large noose that can actually fit over the dog's um, neck itself or if you are using some form of clip in this case I've just got an old carabiner that I want to use as a demonstration but you will need to consider what clip you want to put on the end of your rope and the other thing is once you learn the structure of the um, cat's paw eye splice if you've got a fairly slippery rope, you can actually make yourself a slip lead. So in other words, you can open and close the eye. But that's a little bit more technical. But in this little video, I'm just going to how to show you how to make a simple um, dog's lead using a clip on the end. So here we have my cordage in front of me. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is, is this. A cat's paw eye splice does take up a little bit of rope and what we want to do is we don't want to start working too close to the end of our cordage here because it will come unraveled. I've got it sealed off here with some masking tape but the first thing that we need to do now is we need to sort of roughly determine what size we want it and I'm going to use you can see here I'm using two good hand spans um, to create this loop and the first thing that I need to do is so if say for example we're going to make our loop two good hand spans the first thing that I need to do is open up my cordage fairly close in this case here fairly close to the bottom here where my actual clip is going to be and so once I've I've established that, so I'm going to put it approximately there. It's a little bit wastage of cordage coming up in a bit, but you just need to do it that way. And so once I've done that, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get hold of both sides of my cordage and untwist it until we end up... Oh, it takes a bit to do. We end up with three loops... You can see now here where I've untwisted it, I've now got three loops appeared on the outside of my rope. 
And the next thing that we need to do is we just need to jiggle these about so that those three loops are in a nice row, one behind the other. And just, you'll see when they, where they fit in. And you can see now here, what I've done is I've just twisted them into the right position here. And we now have three loops at that point there. The next thing I'm going to do is just make it a bit easier, is just open up each loop as I get to them. Open them up a bit because what we're going to do is we need it to force our cordage through. So just open it up and it just makes it that little bit easier to pass our cordage through at that point. And in fact, it's a bit tight doing all three at once. So I'm just going to put my fid through each one just to open it up. And there we go. I've opened that up a bit. Right. So that's the first bit. Now, the next bit is that we need to put, if depending on what sort of clip you've got, you will probably need to put your clip on now. So I'm going to put my clip on, just slide it over, and then let it run free at that point. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to feed my rope through those three loops that I've created there. So just pass it through, pass it through, and if, if you need to, just pass it through one and pull all your cordage through. And when you're doing it, just try and keep any twists out of this end, otherwise you end up with a sort of a bit of a crooked um, splice on the end there. And then pass it through the third one. And there we go. We've now passed it through those three. And you can see here now that as I pull up on this, it is a bit tight. You probably, if you're using a slippery rope, it's a lot better. And you, I'm going to pull it all the way up because I'm just having a decorative splice at the end of my rope like that. So that is the first part of this done. So all I'm going to do is just work this up to the end, make sure that it's all nice and snug and neat and tidy, and then I'll get back and I'll show you the next piece. Okay, so as you can see, I've tidied these up a bit. Now the thing is, when you finish this lead, what you can do is just space them out so they're nice and even all the way round. And then what you can do is just coat it with the finishing solution and that will then lock them in place so they don't slide about. That's if you want, if you don't mind, if you don't, sorry, that is if you don't want them to sort of move because you could end up with a sort of bit of a gap like that. But if you want them nice and even and symmetrical, just put some of the finishing solution on. It's a bit like a glue and it will lock them in place. Okay. So we now need, we've done our cat's paw eye splice on this side here. And the thing is, we have to repeat this now because it's not very secure. If we've got a fairly hefty dog, if he was to pull on that and it was a fairly slippery rope, the rope would slide off at that point there. So what we need to do now is lock this whole thing into place. And to lock it in place, what we do now is our previous, where we untwisted the rope previous was on the long section, but what we're going to do now is on the short section, unravel our, just put the twists in, unravel our rope, rope a bit, so we end up with three loops on this side here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to twist it and unravel it. And as you can see, I'm twisting, unraveling, and then as I push them up, and there we go, we've now got our three loops going around our cordage. And what we need to do now is just bring them round so that they are all in the nice same space, if you see what I mean, along the same plane as such. So at the moment they're going all the way around the rope. So what I'm going to do now is just twist them, twist them round a little bit. So that one wants to stay there. So I want to bring this one round so that it comes around underneath and locks itself in that position there. And then this one here, let's see, bring that one round and lock it so that it's there. And you can see now there, they are now falling more or less at that point there. And then when I've done that, once again, what we do is we open up the three loops, open up the three loops, one, two, and three. And then when we've done that, we now get our long rope and we pass our long rope through those three loops. You will see them slightly 
untwisting, but don't worry about that because that will all come together. It is a bit fiddly. Okay, and then the next thing I do is I get the end of my long rope and I'm going to pass it through those three at that point there. So just take it, open it up and then pass my long rope through. And that's all I'm going to do is just pass it through one, pass it through the second one, and then it's a bit fiddly, we then need to pass it through the third one, there's my third one, pass it through that, there we go, it's a little bit easier with a slipperier rope, but you can see now here I have now passed it over, and so all I need to do now is just pull my rope through, there we go, it's getting even, and so pull my rope through, it's a toughie this one, hang on off screen just to, I'm just pulling as hard as I can because what I've got to do is get my cordage through, so maybe, just maybe, do it one at a time, there we go, that's it, and all of a sudden it's so easy now. It suddenly gives, slips, and then you can pull it all through. And there we go. Pull it through, and there, it's a lot easier now. And you can see now here that what I've done is I've created my three rings here, and this is my long lead going off there. There's my short lead. And so all I'm going to do now, see how easy it is. Once, it's, once, it's, once you've got that first bit done, it's all nice and easy. And there we have it. We now have our leash, or the end of our dog leash. Just straighten your rope up so it's nice and even and tight. Just put your spacings in, and you can see now here that we've got a nice cat's paw eye splice here. And to be honest, no matter how much the, your dog is pulling, it's not going to come undone, this one. It shouldn't come undone at all. But don't forget, never use the cat's paw eye splice for critical loads. So anyway, that is now the top or the bottom part or the nearest end to the dog has now got a nice cat's paw eye splice. And so what we'll do now is go to the other end of the lead and we will put a marlin eye splice in. So anyway, I'll see you in a second and we'll do that. Right, so there is the end with my cat's paw eye splice in and my um, clip for the dog and what we need to do now is go to the other end of the rope now depend it Once again, this is all depends on how long you need your lead to be Okay, and so what we do is we go roughly at the point where we want to create our next loop for our handhold and we determine the size of How big we want the handhold so we make it bigger or smaller and further up or further down, but I'm only going to use a short section of lead for this one just to show you how to do this. So now that we've done this, we now put in the marlin eye splice, and it's it's dead simple. But what we're, what I'm making sure is that this is nice and flat the way that I want it, because our marlin spice is also going to be flat in the same direction. So in the same way, we have a loop just gently resting there. We're going to have a loop here gently resting at this point. And to do the marlin eye splice is so simple. It's, just, it's easier than anything. And what you do is, you basically, you're going to feed, so in this particular case, the left hand cord runs up to the end here, and the right hand side of the cord runs to my cat's paw eye splice. And this is where I want to create my loop. So I'm gonna create a loop approximately at that point there so I'm going to just let's see bring it up a little bit closer there we go put my loop in there big enough for my hand to get through make it bigger or smaller as you want and the next thing that I'm going to do is just in the in my okay depending on what cordage you've got if you've got a fairly hard lay it's more difficult but what I'm going to do is just open up one of the leads here at this point here and then when I've opened up the lead at that point there, 
I'm just going to pass my the end of my rope through that and pull. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And pull, 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 pull until we get the size loop that we want at the top of our dog's lead. And so now that we've done that, it's so simple and easy. And then the next thing that we do is we then decide what we've got to do is we've got to come back again. So come back through this one. So in other words, what we're going to do is just tuck it approximately, keep it the same, so tuck it approximately at that point there. And what we're going to be looking for is a minimum of three tucks. If you've got a slipperier lead, you may want a minimum of five tucks. But in this particular case, I'm using a natural cordage and I want to, let's see, I'm going to put just a four fingers width in there. And I know then that at this point here, this is where I need to open up my cordage. So open it up so just one lead is opened up and feed my cordage through. A little bit tricky because it's tight. But let's do this. Okay, there we go. And then just take the twists out of it as you're going along and then pull it up nice and tight. Now, there we go. Give yourself a little bit of a gap so that it looks nice and smart. But we've now got ourselves a nice little eye at that point there. I'm just gonna pull a little bit more through. So we've got four fingers width there and I'm gonna do exactly the same at that point there. Four fingers width will take me underneath that one there. And so I'm now going to open up that one there. Open it up like so. There we go. Open it up, pull it through. And there we have it. We now have one in number Marlin Ice Splice. So we can hold our lead in our hand. And to be honest, once you pull on that, it's not coming undone and you'll be amazed how strong the Marlin Eye Splice actually is. And so there we have it. That is the top end of the lead where our hand is. And then we go further down the lead, obviously a much shorter lead than we require here. And we get down to the bottom here where we've got the cat's paw eye splices. So now, now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is at this, at the bottom point here, where our lead comes off here, we've got to decide how much we're going to cut off. And the thing is, you can cut it off and put some whipping around here. Say, for example, just fairly short, close to the actual cat's paw eye splice itself. And it looks decorative with a nice bit of coloured whipping. Or what you can do is just put some whipping on there then open up these strands here and then open up the threads on these so we end up with a nice little bushy end on there. The choice is yours, you know, and we can do exactly the same on this end here. And so what I'm going to do is in the next piece of the video, I'm going to put a little bit of um, whipping on each end here and just show you what you can do with these particular leads. OK, so I'll see you again in a second. OK, so we're now at the point where we're going to put some whipping on the end of our dog lead. And the other thing is, as well, is that on in this particular exercise, every single knot that I've shown you in this video, I have done separate videos on each one of the processes that we do here, including putting whipping twine onto the end of our rope there. Now, I am using a green twine. And to be honest, if this was an exercise for me personally, I love using black tarred line. It's brilliant stuff to use. It's, it just holds itself in place and it's wonderful. Now, as you can see here, but I'm, okay, I'm using green because I think it's a little bit easier to see. And what I've done is I form myself a loop in the green and the top, the top strand is the shortest end, which ends... Let's see, I can't even see, I'm looking at the camera there. That's the top end and the bottom, bottom one is the long end. So what we do is we create a loop on our work like that. And then the next thing I do is just hold that in place and I take the long one. So take the long piece of whipping tie, twine 
and I start wrapping it around my work. And what we're doing is trapping the U shape that we created underneath it and we're working towards the U in that direction. And it's a, to start with is a little bit fiddly, but once you've started, you can then pull it up nice and tight. And then once you've got it nice and tight, you can start wrapping it. And what you're looking for is get your shorter end out the way, but you're looking for a nice, neat wrap going towards my left hand. And just keep wrapping round and keep it tight, nice and tight, tight as you can, and pull it, and then another turn. And then every so often, check the backside to make sure that we haven't got any gaps. And you can see there, I've got a gap. Just close that gap up, pull it up nice and tight, and keep working from the right to the left. Make sure your other lead doesn't get in the way. That's it. And then pull it up nice and tight and keep wrapping. And that's all we do is just keep wrapping and that is just common whipping that we're putting on here. And what we're looking for is when you do common whipping on a piece of rope, you're looking, let's have a look. What we're looking for is from the start to the finish should be the diameter or one and a half times the actual diameter of the rope. So that is approximately a fingers, small fingers thickness. I'm still under that so I've got to keep working round and putting more turns on until we get to that it just it's a it's not a hard and fast rule it just makes everything look a little bit neater and tidier and I love neat and tidiness when it comes to decorative rope work and so we keep going round that one's in the way as constant as constant can be and you can see here now there we go I've now done approximately the diameter of my rope. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it off with my finger at that point there, and I need to find that loop. Okay, and there is the loop. So you can see here now, there's the loop that goes to my short end here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my long end that we've just wrapped all the way down there, just give it one more pull, make sure that it's nice and tight, and then open up that loop a bit, and then feed the end of my cordage through that loop. And if you find this a little bit difficult, I'll put the link in the description below where there's a, probably a better video on how to do this. And then once I've passed my, the end through that loop, there we go, it's passed through the loop, keep it pulled up nice and tight, so there we go, it's pulled up nice and tight. And then the next thing I do is I pull the right hand, the shorter piece that we had, and you will see that that loop is now closing. And what it's doing now is it's trapping, it's trapping the whipping that I used to wrap that way is under that loop. And then as I keep pulling, and as you keep pulling, sorry, I've got to take this off screen, Pull it really, really tight. And what happens then is that the end of your whipping will disappear underneath the previous whipping there. And all we need to do now is just get a really nice sharp knife and cut off those scraggly ends. So I will, let's have a look. Oh, I hate doing this on camera because I'm sure I'll get it wrong. But anyway, so what I can do is just get hold of the ends and then you can also just frightening and then let's see I want to cut away there we go and there we go we've now got ourselves some nice whipping there and those two little ends there what we can do is just gently poke them underneath into the actual rope work itself so that they then disappear and it all looks nice and flush and you can see there now we've got a nice bit of whipping at this point here now the next thing that you can do, choice is yours, is you can choose where along here you want to cut it. You can cut it fairly close, so you just end up 
with a little bit of a fluffy end or you can cut it further away, tease out all the fibres and you give yourself an even fluffier end to your dog lead. So anyway, that is how to put a bit of whipping on. And then once you've done it on that one, the next thing you would do is you would then go and put it on this end here. You can change colours, whatever you want. But you've then got yourself some nice whipping like that one on this end here. And so that's what I've got to do. And then I'll come back and show you the finished result. Right, so as you can see, I've put my whipping on that one there. I've cut it off fairly short and I've now got myself a little fluffy bit there. But you, like I said, you can have it longer and a big fluffy bit. And then what I've done on this side here, as, as you can see, I've put some whipping on here as well. And then the next thing that I've done is I have wrapped it in masking tape at this point here. And that is where I now choose along here. Once again, choice is yours, higher, lower, choice is yours. Okay, and so now that I've done that, I have put my um, masking tape on there and then I'm going to get this tool here and um, if you're interested in this tool as well, I'll put, once again, link in the description below of what this tool is and where to get it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up so that it's nice and tidy. I want just a little bit of fluff hanging off the end of my whipping there. And then once I've done that, I get my tool, cut through it, and there we go. Nice neat cut on the end there. And all that's left for me to do now is just take off this masking tape here, fluff it out a little bit. And as you can see then here, I've got myself, okay, it's a short dog's lead, but you can see here at this end here, this is where the attachment goes. We then go on to the cat's paw eye splice. We then put a little bit of whipping here. I could have taken this a bit shorter or longer if I wanted to. I could even, if I wanted to, tuck it in again at that point there underneath the previous rope. And then obviously this is a very, either a very tall dog or a very short lead, but this is the main part of the lead, which then eventually goes up to the handle and the handle itself was made using the Marlin um, eye splice or the lazy eye splice. And then once again, at this end here, I've just put a little bit more whipping on and it just, all I need to do now is take off the masking tape here and we've now completed a dog lead. And to be honest, don't be fooled by this. This is strong. This is, very, it's, it's, I believe, it's as strong as just a normal splice. So, but this end here is not. So this is just purely decoration, but it is strong enough to hold a dog. And like I said again, if you want to, just place these at exact, because they do move about a bit once you've got them on. If you want them looking smart and symmetrical on there, put a bit of finishing solution on, which is once again in the description below. So anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. And if you liked it, if you hated it, but please do leave me a comment and tell me about it why you hated it or why you liked it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.